today's lesson is how to find the area of a square or rectangle. Okay, so you don't need to draw this, but here we have a square. We know it's a square because the opposite sides are parallel to each other, and these opposite sides are also parallel to each other. And we have four corners that are perfect right or 90 degree angles. Also, all four sides, same length. So we've got a square. Now, if we wanted to figure out the area of the square, if we said that each one of these little squares, these teeny tiny squares that are there, are, let's say, an inch, then that would mean that we have 10 inches for the length, 10 inches for the width, or you can really think of this as width and this as length. It does not matter. Those can be commutative and interchangeable. <laughs> but basically, we have a 10 by 10 square. So to figure it out, hopefully we know from fourth grade, which this should be a complete review of fourth grade, is that we multiply. So 10 times 10 is 100. We could prove it by counting up all the tiny little squares. And sure enough, we would get 100. But our shortcut would be 10 inches times 10 inches equals 100 inches squared or squared inches. And we can clearly see why they are square inches because each one of these forms a square. And there are a hundred squares that are each an inch by an inch by an inch by an inch. And I'm not going to draw all of them, but that's why it's square inches. We're not just measuring the length of something. We're measuring all the squares that fit inside. All right, now go ahead and draw yourself a square. And of course, I am working with my magic whiteboard. So even though the angles aren't perfectly 90 degrees and even though my side lengths might not be parallel or the same side lengths as the others, we're gonna assume this is a square. Here's how we can show that it is definitely a square. We can, and we can use symbols to show that all four sides are the same length as well. So we're going to start using those types of symbols, and that might be a little bit new for fifth grade. So the area for a square is length times width. Or the cool thing about squares is that since every side is the same length, you can just do side squared. Pick one side and then multiply it by itself. Let's get some labels on our square here. Let's say that we've got five feet for each side. We're building a dog pen here. Five foot by five foot dog pen. Area equals length times width. That would mean five feet times five feet, which would equal 25 feet squared because of all the squares in there. If we plugged it into this formula here, area equals a side length squared. Well, basically that means five, <laughs> the S already kind of looks like a five, coincidence, five squared. That means five times five. That two means how many times do we see the five? And we'll still get 25 square feet. Yay! So, Length times width, or if it's a square and all the sides are the same length, just think side squared. Draw yourself a rectangle. Now, a square is a type of rectangle because in order to be a rectangle, it has to have 90 degree angles at all the corners. It has to be a quadrilateral with four sides. And opposite sides have to be parallel to each other. And opposite sides also have to be the same length. So even though this short side and this bottom longer side are not the same length, the opposite sides are the same length. 
so it counts as a rectangle. And that's why a square is a type of rectangle too. It fits all those requirements and all their sides happen to be the same length as well. So we've got a rectangle with our labels so that we know it's a rectangle. Now let's figure out what our dimensions are for this rectangle. Let's do some decimal multiplication. Let's say seven and a half yards for the length and the width is two and a half yards. So we have seven and a half yards by two and a half yards. The formula to find the area of a rectangle is area equals length times width. So let's plug it in. And really, people look at it differently. Some people will say, well, this is the length. And some people will say, no, that's how wide it is. It doesn't matter because of the commutative property of multiplication, you can flip flop the two and still get the same answer. So I'll just go ahead and say that seven and a half is the length and we can plug that in. And the width is two and a half yards and we can plug that in. And that should give us our area. All right, set up a multiplication problem for yourself. With decimals, I like to do the traditional algorithm, one on top of the other. And we can basically compensate by pretending that the decimal is not there. In this compensation, we've multiplied each of our factors by 10 so that we could move the decimal over. And now we have 75 times 25. Great. Go ahead and solve this any way you choose, any strategy that you'd like. And don't forget about what you might have to do to compensate back at the end. Go ahead and try to solve this one on your own. Press pause now. Okay, let's see if you got the right answer. So five times five is 25. Carry the 20. Five times seven is 35, really it's a 70, so that's really 350, plus two more would be 37, or 370, because it's two more tens. And that's why we have that three in the hundreds place and the seven in the tens place. Okay, now I need to go on to multiply my tens, my twenties here. So 20 times five, would get me something that's gonna have a zero for sure here. So that's why I'm always writing my zero as a placeholder. So now two times five is 10. Two times seven is 14, plus one is 15. And really because of place value, that was really 1,500. So now we've got those partial products and can add together. But wait! 1,875 square yards, that doesn't make sense. If I was estimating, it would be like eight yards times three yards, and I'm way off. Ah, this compensation here. I compensated by 10 in this factor, and I also compensated by multiplying by 10 in this factor. That means I double compensated. There were two digits behind the decimal place that I compensated for. So that means that I need to take that decimal and move it over and get 18 and 75 hundredths yards squared for the final answer. And that's a lot closer to an estimate of eight times three is 24. Yeah, definitely closer. And we now have basically figured out what is inside. If we were to cut that all up into those squares, All the inside area is 18, almost 19 yards squared. Awesome.
task time. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Other than multiplying with decimals, this should be a review of fourth grade standards. So I'm going to give you a square, and I'm going to give you a rectangle, and I'm going to give you enough dimensions so that you should, should be able to figure out the area. Don't forget, your units for the area are square units. And remember what we've learned about multiplying with decimals and how we compensate and then compensate back. Here are your problems. Okay, number one is your square. Number two is your rectangle. Put symbols on there and labels just in case you weren't sure. And I've also labeled just enough information for you to figure it out. Remember what the formulas are that you can plug in and definitely remember what to do when multiplying with decimals. You'll be sharing your answers and your strategies for how you worked with the decimals tomorrow with some new discussion groups.